to do some um, modeling of the universe. Lehman. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Lehman. I am um, I'm not an academic anymore. I'm a software engineer um, at the Flatiron Institute. Um, I started that job a couple months ago. Before that, I was a postdoc um, at CCA, the Center for Computational Astrophysics at the Flatiron Institute. Uh, and so today we're going to be doing some hands-on programming um, on, on how to write an HOD code. I thought this would be kind of fun. It uh, puts some, some meat on the bones of some of the uh, theory ideas that we've been talking about. And we'll actually implement some of them today in Python. Uh, hopefully you'll maybe learn, um, we'll focus on sort of NumPy fundamentals, uh, use some tools like CoreFunk that are used in large-scale structure cosmology. Uh, and yeah, hopefully it'll be fun. So everybody is gonna, um, so how this is gonna work is you'll all open this notebook uh, in Google Colab and I posted the link to that in Slack and it's also linked from the uh, program website. And what we'll do is I'll go through the, the notebook, I'll do some talking uh, and then we'll, we'll get to, we'll run some code and then eventually we'll get to some parts that have comments like your code here and there I'll pause for, for a minute or a couple minutes. You'll program your answers then I'll program my answer. Uh, and then later on, as the as the tasks get more complicated, we'll you know take ten minute uh, programming uh, breaks, and I'll walk around, see how people are doing. Uh, so this is going to be very interactive. So please follow along um, in your browser, uh, and also do let me know if you have any issues uh, running this collab notebook. I think at least some people were were having problems, but for others it was working okay. So raise your hand, and and I will try to help. Um, if, if you know, a large fraction of people are, are having issues. Okay, so we talked about um, HOD this morning, the halo occupation distribution. Uh, it's a very common analysis technique in large scale structure that lets us connect um, cosmological simulations that do not actually form galaxies because they are gravity only and do not contain hydrodynamical physics to observations of galaxies in the real sky. Um, which of course we, we see these, these luminous point sources that are not actually present in our simulations. Uh, so the way, way we connect these simulations to the observations uh, is through the galaxy halo connection or, uh, and specifically HOD. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a halo catalog from an n-body simulation, which identifies dark matter halos. Uh, we're going to make selections on that halo catalog to approximately match um, a, a real galaxy sample of luminous red galaxies. We're going to measure the clustering using core funk that I mentioned. Uh, and then we're going to turn those halos into galaxies uh, with HOD. We're going to assign, we're going to select positions from those halos and just call that position a galaxy. Uh, and we're going to do so based on uh, the mass of the halo. And that's the central idea of HOD. And then hopefully uh, for fun at the end, we're going to uh, upgrade what we've written in NumPy um, using, uh, using a tool called Numba that'll help it run faster. Okay, so now we're gonna start writing the notebook. Um, the, the very first cell of the notebook, um, everybody should run now. This'll, this'll take a minute. Uh, and it, if everything is going well, you should see um, things start to download. It's going to install um, a dependency that we'll need and the Abacus Utils uh, Python package. Uh, which contains the, the interface that we're going to use to load the, the Halo catalog. Um, and then immediately after that, you can run this um, g down command to download a, uh, an Abacus Halo catalog. And then the, the cell after that starts with tar, it's just going to extract that, that Halo catalog. So this, this will take hopefully just like two minutes to run. So everybody should run all, th all three of these cells now. Um, raise your hand if you're getting Okay, some permission denied errors. All right, I'm gonna go see what's happening because I, I could not reproduce these errors. It's it's in the cloud, so it should be it should scale. But let, let me look at some of these errors. Yeah, I could download it, but oh no, I don't. Yeah, it's, there's this. Uh, Just give me give me like five minutes and I'll, I'll come up with a workaround for this. Well, everybody's saying cola. 
okay. like collab. I always thought it was collab because you're on the phone. I mean, so you right, say yeah. collaborate or collaborate, you know what I mean? Yeah. I reset the RC. <laughs> Okay, everyone. Uh, hopefully, we are back online. You may have to. Uh, so, I, I uh, set up another URL that you can download from. Um, if you've already made a copy of the original notebook, you probably have to go to the original link, uh, the, the original notebook, uh, to to see this updated link because you do not want to be typing this this full thing. Um, so, the if so, the correct command begins with exclamation port w exclamation mark w get, um, and this is all downloading from, from the Flatiron server, so hopefully we won't overwhelm them. Uh, but I guess we managed to overwhelm uh, Google Drive, so we'll see how this goes. Um, okay, so yeah, please let me know um, if you have any issues running this. Actually, can I, can I get some raised hands if people are seeing this downloading correctly? Okay, great. Um, I am also going to have to download this myself. Okay, this is obviously going to take a few minutes to download. Let me talk to yeah. So let, let's let's take a pause here. Uh, you can let this keep downloading. Uh, I think I will talk to the organizers and yeah. Well, I don't know if we want to wait this long, uh, but just for now, just let it keep downloading, and we'll we'll take a short pause here. While the file is downloading, I, I'm just going to uh, wow everybody with a with a fun video I, I made uh, showing so a zoom in of some some end body simulations. And this is actually maybe a good chance to talk about what end body simulations actually are and, and how they run. Um, as the name end body sort of suggests, there are, there are n particles in the simulation. Uh, there's usually uh, nowadays hundreds of billions or even trillions of particles in the simulation. Um, and this is sort of an extreme zoom in of, um, of a whole suite of uh, simulations that, that we ran called Abacus Summit. Abacus is the code, Summit is the computer. Um, and this is not a video through time. This is actually a video through cosmology space. We ran uh, about 100 simulations, each with a different set of background cosmological parameters. And then we looked at where individual particles in one simulation ended up in um, another simulation in another cosmology. Um, so you play this, this video and you see that different cosmological parameters produce different amounts of clustering. The clustering is measured in this, this panel in the, the, the middle here um, in the, the, it's, uh, with what's called the two-point correlation function, which we talked about a fair bit um, this morning. Uh, we also talked about it quite a bit in terms of the CMB. This is the two-point correlation function of, of dark matter in these simulations, or equivalently just the, the 2PCF of the particles themselves. Uh, so for a sense of scale, this um, halos are typically like one megaparsecs, rough, roughly speaking. Um, so this is this sort of transition here is from uh, the one halo to two halo regime. Uh, now we've sort of entered a different part of the, the suite, which has a much uh, bigger set of changes in cosmological parameters. So the, the changes are very dramatic. Uh, but this is sort of the idea behind why we run the, these end body simulations. Um, different cosmological parameters produce different amounts of clustering as evidenced by this line going up and down. And then you try to figure out which one of these uh, best fits the um, 
observed galaxy clustering after you've painted on galaxies with something like HOD. And fingers crossed after this video finishes playing, uh, the file will have finished uh, downloading for, for most people. Okay, it looks like it's finished downloading for me. Uh, can I get a show of hands for anybody who it is uh, not finished for? Anybody who's still downloading the file? Okay, we're gonna wait um, just another minute. And I think this downloaded to the, the wrong file name anyway. So I'm gonna have to do a little, and that, that's just because I ran it multiple times. So hopefully other people won't have to do this, but let's see if this works. Uh, for those of you uh, that are finished downloading the file, go ahead and try to run the tar command to extract the, the file that you just downloaded. And you should actually be able to see, uh, if you look at the file browser, that there are some files here. Okay, that ran successfully for me, so fingers crossed. Um, Okay, I think I'm going to, to press on now and hopefully most people now have uh, the file and have extracted the file and we'll find out um, in just a second uh, whether that's the case because the notebook will give you an error if things didn't work right. Okay, so go ahead and run this cell with all the imports to get our code environment set up. It should just take about three seconds. Get a green check mark, everything's good. Uh, and now, now we're finally going to load the, the Halo catalog, which we worked so hard to download. Uh, and uh, so go ahead and run the cell that starts with cat equals, catalog equals, this Composito Halo catalog object. Composito is the name of the Halo finder. Um, uh, and this comes, this particular catalog comes from a simulation called Abacus Summit under, underscore huge base, underscore blah, blah, blah. Huge base just refers to the particular size and resolution. Okay, I got a green check mark after I loaded the Halo catalog. How are we doing? Uh, hands raised if you got a green check mark. Okay, amazing. Now let, let's figure out what we actually downloaded. Let's uh, print this this cat object, this catalog. Okay, uh, this is a Composito Halo catalog at Redshift 0 0.5. Uh, the the catalog contains about 17 million halos. Uh, with four fields or four columns. And we'll see what those are in a second, taking this much space. And we also downloaded a bunch of particles along with the, these halos. Um, and these are the constituent particles that, that make up the halos. And we'll use those for satellites later. Uh, the actual table of halo properties is stored in this cat.halos. And we'll, we'll assign h equals cat.halos just because we'll be using this h variable a lot. Uh, and then the metadata about the simulation, like the size of the box, we're going uh, is in h.meta, and we're going to store the box size in L because we're also going to be using that a lot. You run this cell, you see it's going to print the box size 2000 uh, and the Halo catalog. So these are the four columns, the four fields that I mentioned. Um, this XL2COM is the center of mass of, of the Halo. It's actually the center of mass of the, the level two Halo, just sort of a sub-Halo thing, but that, that's the center of mass, basically. Um, and then the, the column on the far right is the number of particles, N, in the Halo. So this halo has 48 particles. This one has, uh, has 100. It should range from, I think, 35 to many millions of particles. Um, and then these the MP start and MP out relate uh, map halos to particles, and, but we're not going to worry about that for now. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the mass in physical units um, of, of each halo. And to do that, we need the we just multiply the number of particles in each halo by the particle mass. Uh, the particle mass is stored in this um, this field of the the meta dictionary, and it's called particle mass HM sum because it's in funny cosmology units of uh, ancient inverse uh, solar masses. So, okay, your first task is to um, fill out this this cell with code to add a column to the table H. So it's going to look like H. Um, M equals something, and like I said, it's it's just the the 
product of uh, the number of particles and the particle mass, which, which I told you what, what that's called here. So take a second, write that out. It should look like h bracket n times h dot meta particle, particle mass h m sun. Okay, green check mark, good. Um, and now we're going to take that new column and okay, and we can we can check what we did. Now we're going to actually not going to print it. I'm just going to do h and then control enter. Uh, and now we see in the table we have a new column with very large masses. Um, and let's, let's now find out exactly the, the mass range that we, we have. Uh, so the next task is to print the minimum and maximum of the log 10 of the mass. So take a second and do that, and then I'll write out my answer. Uh, and there's a gotcha here. Some of the, some of the halos have zero mass, just uh, because as, as um, Somebody said earlier that there are there are predators in uh, in Halo catalogs, uh, much like uh, software. Uh, so you the the zero mass is is a sort of a, a technical detail. Uh, so, so you want to print the minimum and maximum non-zero mass. And by the way, if anybody wants to work ahead, feel free. Uh, if you look at the table of contents, you'll see there there's a couple of um, bonus topics that we're, um, that we're not going to do together, most likely. Um, but if anybody is, is uh, working far ahead and wants want something a little bit more challenging, uh, you can try uh, some of the, the bonuses. OK, so I think this should look like um, numpy.min. Oh, 10 of H M where H N is greater than zero. I'm just gonna be lazy and copy paste because this is a quick operation. We don't need to. So let's run that, see if I got it right. Okay. Uh, so this is saying that um, our halo masses, which cosmologists frequently quote in uh, log 10 units are range from uh, 10 to the 12.3 to 10 to the 15.4. Uh, so small halos to gigantic clusters. And uh, for this, for today, we're gonna be modeling um, LRGs, luminous red galaxies, and they have, a, yeah, they, they happen to have a host halo mass of 10 to the 13 typically. Uh, so this should be an okay catalog because the minimum mass in our catalog is below this this 10 to the 13. And it's not an accident. Um, the, this, these simulations were designed to support LRG modeling in particular. Okay, so far so good. All right, now we're going to uh, plot this halo field. Um, we're going to visualize our data and we're gonna use Matplotlib to do so. Um, and the, the idea here is that the, this H X underscore L2 COM field is a, um, it'll show it this way. It's basically just a NumPy array of 17 million objects uh, with X, Y, and Z positions in 3D space, ranging from minus 1000 to 1000. Uh, and now we want to plot, uh, just make a 2D density field of that data. Now, as a lot of you probably know, if you try to do a scatter plot of 17 million points in Matplotlib, uh, your collab notebook will probably slow down or, or even crash and you'll have to restart. Um, so I definitely don't recommend doing that. Um, for this many points, I recommend doing a, um, a 2D histogram. There's a couple different functions in Matplotlib that will help you do this. Um, and you can feel free to, to Google around a bit if you, if you don't have a function that you like to use for this. Uh, but we're gonna take you know, two, three minutes here and everybody should uh, write their own, uh, every, everybody should make a scatter plot of these these 17 million points. Sorry, not scatter plot, a histogram. And I'm going to walk around now and see how people are doing. Feel free to to uh, raise your hand if you need help. Okay. 
-hmm. Okay, so um, one common question that that's come up is is the format of this data. Um, so this this column here, uh, it's helpful if you print out the the shape, uh, and then you see that the shape is. 17 million halos by three, and those three are X, Y, and Z. So your, your task is basically to do a, something like a, um, a histogram of the of X by Y. And I get, yeah, I guess I'll just go ahead and, and show you my, my solution now, uh, which is, uh, okay, we're gonna polish this up a little bit. Um, so for MapHotLib, I like to get both the figure and the axes, uh, I use subplots for that. Um, and you can use um, axe.hist2d, the 2D histogram, if I maybe, hopefully, is the right thing. Um, and so, okay, the shape is, like I said, is number of halos by three. So we're going to use a colon to say all halos, comma, zero. That selects the X, just the X field of the halo centers. Um, and comma, the Y field. Okay, let's start with that. Make sure I got the name of the function right. Okay. It's Print out a bunch of stuff I didn't want to. I'm going to add a semicolon at the end just to hide that. Okay, well, that, that's something, but it doesn't look very cosmological. Uh, it's, it's extremely coarse. Uh, so we're going to increase the number of bins, something like 500. Uh, and this, this, okay, now we have something cosmological. Um, and so as you might guess, the bins parameter sets the number of bins in X and Y for the scatter plot. Uh, it's still, okay, it still looks squashed, but it, uh, it should be a square, right? So we know how to fix that. X dot set aspect equal. Okay, that, that looks better. And of course, we always label our axes. So set X label X units, of, uh, funny cosmologist units of um, megaparsecs divided by H, little h. Oops, and this is has to be Y. Okay, great. We plotted a cosmological density field of, of halos. It looks kind of like a Gaussian random field. Um, that's that's not a surprise because we're we're looking on gigaparsec scales here. Um, each edge of the box is two gigaparsecs. This is the um, scale on scale on which the the variance density variance is very small. Perturbations are um, are still quasi linear, uh, and so it looks a lot like the initial conditions still. Um, okay, good. Any pretty, pretty straightforward. The, the bonus here is to plot a thin slice. Um, and, but I think, wait, let me, let me look at the schedule here. 430, we're, yeah, we're not gonna do that. Um, a thin slice would show a more cosmic web-like structure. That, that's sort of the, the punchline. Um, you know, actually, we are going to do that because the next part section is a is a, a bigger task, and so we'll do that after the break in five minutes. Okay, so for the moment, we're going to um, we're going to plot a thin slice of this this projected cube that we just did. Um, so I'm going to let people work on that for a minute, and then I will will show my answer, and I'm going to walk around a bit now. Okay, I am going to show everybody how I solved this bonus. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the, the pre-cooked meal out from, from under the counter now um, so that you don't have to, uh, so that I don't keep you all from, from break while I'm typing. But it looks like I'm keeping you from break while loading this tab. Okay, so here's how I um, solved this particular problem. So I wrote this, this plot pause function that takes the positions we want to make a density field of. Um, the first part that we already did, I just passed it the centers of the halo. 
And in the second part, I passed it the halo centers selecting on this, this the field with index two, which is Z, any Zs that are greater than our box size divided by two minus 20. So just 20 megaparsecs um, from the edge of the box. I think I wrote 40, but this can be 20 or 40. Um, either way, you'll see the cosmic web. Uh, and then the, the other trick you might need is that if you're plotting the log of the density field um, to, make the, uh, to make the peaks and, and valleys um, uh, a little bit more uniform so that you can see everything clearly, then you will end up taking the log of a bunch of empty cells. And this is the, the trick that I use to, to get around that. You can tell, tell Matplotlib the color that you want the, um, the, the log of zero values to be the, with this cmap.setbat. So when you do that, you get something that looks more filamentary, a little bit more webby. Um, we're still, and you can tell we're on very, very large scales here. The, um, the correlation length is, is much, much shorter than, than the box. This, this is really zoomed out. Okay, cool. So we saw that projecting through the entire density field kind of looks like a Gaussian random field, but then taking a thin slice of the cosmic web pops out a little bit more. Um, great. We're going to go to break for, according to schedule, for 10 minutes. We'll come back at 4.42, and then we'll keep going with the two-point correlation function. And thanks, everybody, for your patience with the downloading troubles. I'll be around if, if you're still having troubles. Yeah. So we're going to do it in four steps, which I've written out here. We're going to take the halo catalog uh, and select all halos with mass greater than 10 to 13. We're going to wrap the positions to this domain, 0 to L. And that just means right now in the catalog, for, for weird reasons, the positions range from minus 1,000 to plus 1,000 uh, for a total of 2,000. And you can see that actually in the density field here, the axes go from minus 1,000 to 1,000. And the core func code just expects things to go from zero to 2,000 instead of minus 1,000 to 1,000. So that's just a pre-processing step. And then we're going to measure the two-point correlation function using uh, this core func .theory .sci. Uh, And I linked the, the API here so you can look up how to call that function. Um, and you'll need to pass it some arguments like how many bins to uh, to use in computing the correlation function. And I, I've told you what you should set for those settings. Um, and then finally, we're going to plot the measurement that we make. And we'll, we'll see a bump magically appear at the BAO scale. Um, I've started writing this, this function for you here. Um, I've, uh, I've uh, starting by importing the function that you use to compute the, the 2PCF called psi. Uh, and then I've uh, also written a, a function signature that you should um, that you should code against uh, by filling out the body of this function. And it looks kind of funny, and uh, you may have not seen the, this um, syntax before, where you have this argument called pause followed by colon followed by this um, this MPT NumPy typing ND array bracket blah blah blah. Uh, these are called Python type annotations. And these are ways of hinting uh, to the programmer that the argument that you pass this function should be of this type. So this should be, should be uh, an array of float 32s. Um, and we know it should be of shape n comma three. The shape is not in the type annotation. Someday it might be, but NumPy doesn't support that yet. Um, shape n comma three because the three is x y z n is the the number of objects. Um, what else to say about type annotations? This is the output type. You can make it an astropy table, um, and I'll and it's not super important, but I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, okay, yeah, type annotations are a way of they're they're also a helpful way of me to communicate to you that when you're filling out this function, it should take this these particular arguments with these um, that, that are, that they're, they're ND arrays. 
Um, and just as a reminder, an ND array is just a normal NumPy array. That, that's what they call it under the hood, an n-dimensional array, but it's just a NumPy array. Okay, so we're, yeah, so I'm gonna stop talking and everybody can start working through these steps one at a time um, and fill out this function and go. Yes? Okay, I'm going to help you along with uh, the first part of this, these four steps, which is to make a selection of halos with mass 10 to 13. So we'll call this um, large H or yeah, for large halos. And we're selecting centers of mass, uh, which we know is this funny name XL2COM. And we're going to select. Um, halos with mass greater than or I think I wrote greater than or equal to 10 to the, the 13. Um, and I'm going to run this and now see what this large H object looks like. It's a column uh, and it has some length. Let's see how that, that length compares to a full table. So we're going to do length of our selection divided by length of the halo catalog. Okay, so we selected about 16% of the, the halos. That's, that's what this means. And now the for the next part, uh, well, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you okay so for the next part, remember that these positions range from minus 1000 to 1000 and that's easy enough to see. We do a large h dot min and large h dot max minus 1000 to 1000, we want zero to 2000. Uh, and so we can apply Python's modulus to that. H, H I think this works. Um, let's find out. Large h dot min is now zero or close to it. Large h dot max is now 2000. This, uh, okay, so this, this, Funny syntax here, percent equals is shorthand for large H equals large H modulus L. Modulus is the, uh, uh, wraps the positions to the, the sort of the, the first periodic image to positive values. Um, and L is our box size 2000. And I think the other difference is that this operator is in place rather than the way it was written before, so it's a little bit faster, a little bit more, um, yeah, idiomatic. Okay, so now, so now this is this is step one. Step one. This is step two. Step three is going to be to call compute xi with these positions and some bins. Um, and of course, you have to fill out this function as part of step three. And I'm, I'm going to let you all keep working on, on, on that. So you're going to be calling this, this psi function now as part of step three. Okay, uh, I just want to point out uh, an error that some people are, are getting. Um, if you if if you're calling core funk and you're getting this runtime error, then you might have to restart the the runtime to clear the error. Um, it it happens if you if you pass core funk the wrong arguments and it gives you this error once, then it will continue to give the error even if you fix the arguments until you restart the runtime. Um, fortunately, this is pretty quick. You don't need to redownload the data. Um, you just restart the runtime by going to runtime, restart runtime, and then start things from, from the imports. And you should be able to quickly get back to where you were. Uh, let me know if anybody gets, gets stuck.
Okay. Uh, for this one, I definitely threw you in the deep end a little bit. I'm gonna, um, uh, and the documentation for this code is not great. I can say that some co-author of the code. Um, so uh, to give you a little bit more help, I just wanna point out that you only need these arguments up to Z. So it should look like, I'm just gonna paste this here to remind myself what the function signature looks like. Although actually I think the notebook will tell me. First argument is the, the box size. We called the box size L. Um, number of threads to bin file. Bin, um, okay, this is another annoying thing about this code is that this argument is called bin file, which makes you think you need a, a file, but you don't need a file. You literally just need a NumPy array of, of bins. Uh, and then the next arguments are X, Y, and Z. Uh, we know the, um, uh, I'm going to let you all fill, fill th this out. Um, you should be able to select X, Y, and Z, select X, Y, Z from the, the pause argument. Okay, which we, we did that we did that for the, the, the histogramming above it, plotting the density field. So uh, it's the same idea here. And then this will return a result, which we'll call res. And to make res look nice, we'll wrap it in a, an astropy table, not strictly necessary. Then we'll return that res. Okay, so the parts I left out here are computing the bins. But I, I told you um, that they should just be a linear, 40 linear space spins from one to 120 megaparsecs. So, so you're going to need to call a NumPy function to create a, an array of 40 linearly spaced um, bin edges. Just, uh, and and you also need to select X, Y, and Z, and then call psi um, with those X, Y, and Z that you selected from pause. Okay, let's work on this for, for a few more minutes and then we'll get to the plotting. Okay, uh, we're in the last eight minutes of the session here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I would do this. Um, and then we'll plot the correlation function and then we'll be done for today. Uh, so, okay, so we needed to fill out X, Y, and Z. And we know that pause is shape um, N comma three and the, the second axis is the is x y and z so we just change this to zero one two uh, to be extra fancy you could do um, by fancy I mean save your, your fingers some typing you could do um, star pause dot t so t is the takes the transpose so then the x y z axis is first star splats the the first axis of the array to each of the function arguments uh, which are x y and z um, so so saying, so this is equivalent to the longer form here, um, but the longer form is more readable. Okay. Uh, and we needed to fill out the bins, right? We needed 40 linearly spaced bins. So uh, we do that with numpy.lin space, but there's a, a lot of ways you could do this, but this is one way. And I think I said to do it between one and 120 and 40 of them. And if we hover over to check the arguments, their start, stop, and number, good. We want to go from one to 120 with 40. Great. Okay. And then we pass bins and we're gonna capture the results. Uh, we're gonna call this large H to PCF. I'm gonna run this and see if something happens. Maybe I'll get a runtime error, we'll see. 
Um, okay. Oh, if you want to see a progress bar, I completely forgot about this, but if you want to see a progress bar, you can type verbose equals true, but, but I forgot to write that before I ran the cell so we don't get a progress bar, but we got a check mark, took about 20 seconds, good. Um, let's just print this variable, see what it looks like. Um, because I, I wrote this line, which I'm highlighting at the top here, result equals table result, I've converted this NumPy array to AstroPy table is, is, sorry, yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, um, I thought, like I saw in the documentation that if you do 40 in the bins, then you actually create 39 bins because you need the, like, uh, both of the edges. Yes, yes, you are exactly right. This is, I'm just gonna lower this. Okay, thanks, yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, yep, I think, I think you're exactly right. Um, I should, and actually, yeah, we can, yeah, right. Okay, so the, the table of results is length 39 uh, instead of 40. So what I should have done is 40 plus one here. Thank you. Um, and that's because the the left, the uh, the first value in the array is the, the left edge of the less mo leftmost bin and the final value in the array is, is the right edge of the rightmost bin. Uh, so we have 40 bins in between those. And here we get our nice progress bar. Um, yes, Corefunk, as, as some of you have seen, crashes with runtime errors a lot, but when it does run, it runs fast. And now our table is length 40. And let's go ahead and plot this correlation function together in the last four minutes. Def plot 2PCF. Um, we'll call this CF for a correlation function. And as I said before, I like to do fig comma x equals plt dot subplots. So I get access to both figure and the axis, just personal preference. Uh, and we're going to plot the midpoint of each of the bins, uh, which is going to be cf r min plus cf dot r max divided by two. And we're plotting that against psi. And we'll do that with x dot plot r mid comma cf. Uh, and if I scroll up to the column names here, I see that it's called psi. And okay. Then I'm going to call this function plot 2pcf large h 2pcf. And if I didn't forget anything, this will do something. Great. Okay. So we have a plot. Now we need to mess around with the, the axes. Uh, we're going to definitely want to set the y scale to to log. That was easy. Did I forget something? No, anyway. Okay, and we're going to label our axes. Set x label r. So this is separation in units of megaparsec over h and psi. And we're going to use, uh, I like to get a little fancy direction. I'm gonna write psi, write dollar sign slash psi of R and it's dimensionless and Unicode error. I need to prepend this string with R because otherwise Python does not like the fact that I wrote slash X and R makes this a raw string, which see on the, on the left here, we got this, this nicely rendered LaTeX Sci var. Um, and now we've plotted a correlation function going from zero to 120 megaparsecs. Uh, there's a bump here. This bump is the acoustic peak. Um, so no, so congratulations, you've detected your first BAL. Today we are all Daniel Eisenstein. Um, and, and you could, um, and so if you had many such simulations, you could repeat this process for many different sets of cosmological parameters and find which one has the, the BAO um, peak um, scale that, that matches that in the observed universe. Um, so far, we've only done this on halos. Tomorrow, we're going to um, paint galaxies onto these halos and see where that takes us. Um, are there any questions? I'll leave, I'll leave the, the code up here. 
Are there any questions in, in the, the last minute or so here? All right, thank you all so much. Thank you for sticking with me through the technical issues and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Lehman. Thank you, thank you. Oh, it was great to end the day on a get BAO peak there. Very nice. Um, well, I presume you are probably as tired as I am and some of you actually had long trips. Um, we won't have an official reception. That was a casualty of us trying to and managing to accommodate this many people. It was simply too complicated and basically impossible to organize. So disperse yourselves. There's good places to get a drink if you're over 21. If you're under 21, Coca-Cola, uh, relax, get dinner, check back into Airbnb, socialize. We'll see you tomorrow morning. We start at 9.15, breakfast, light breakfast available starting 8.30. Anything else, organizers, anything else I forgot? I think that's it. See you tomorrow. <laughs>